Here are 10 top growth hacks you can do now from yashaharari.com. Number one, launch on Tuesday. Number two, comment on Slidely. Number three, use social media. Number four, get reviews on Amazon. Number five, upsell on exit pages. Number six, enter awards contests. Number seven, use the thank you page. Number eight, use email chimps, etc. Number nine, hire freelancers. And number 10, pay influencers. Want more details? Keep watching. Welcome to another episode of Marketing Insights with me, Yasha Harari. So 10 top growth hacks you can do right now. Number one, launch on Tuesday. Tuesdays are statistically the best day of the week to launch new products and services, whether they be digital or tangible. Um, that is a well-studied piece of data. Uh, if you are interested in uh, more of that, you can, of course, uh, see the links below. Check out uh, the research on our site or contact me for details. Uh, but Tuesday is absolutely um, the ideal day to launch most products and services. Of course, you might be in a niche where that is not the case. And there are some advantages to you know, do picking other dates, including maybe the worst day of the week when nobody is watching so that you can um, get the attention of the people who are watching because it's, it's never nobody, right? It's just less people. So let's say Thursday or Friday um, or even Saturday or Sunday when people tend to watch really a lot less compared to the regular weekdays. Um, so if you're launching a product, the best day really is Tuesday. You can experiment with other days, but um, statistically speaking, that is your best shot if you are marketing anything uh, in the main that uh, typically will do well, uh, as other products do, right? All right, there you go. Number two, comment on Slidely. Um, there's been a lot of research done about the impact of leaving comments on uh, different types of websites and Slidely is a slide sharing uh, type website, you know, slide share as well. Uh, doesn't matter really which one you use, however, Slidely is very good because of its domain authority and ranking for obvious reasons. Uh, if you look at the domain metrics and scores of it, and the page authority scores, you can get quite a lot of good juice uh, marketing wise in terms of uh, SEO links um, when you comment properly on Slidely. Uh, so that's also a good way to engage the audience, which is actually <clears throat> even more important, frankly, than links, because um, if there's a lot of people talking about a particular stack or deck or slide that you're looking at, um, having a heavily engaged topic or thread where you uh, put yourself in as a you know authoritative thought leader on the topic uh, can drive a lot of eyeballs to your message and can result in a lot of clicks and visits to your site which of course can result in conversions. So there you go, comment on Slidely. Number three, use social media. Uh, it's obviously well known that social media marketing is a very strong uh, way to drive eyeballs to your website, your product, your service. Uh, you might even just have, you know, your only web presence might in fact be your Facebook group page or your LinkedIn company page. Um, and that's actually perfectly fine if you don't have a reason to have an entire website, uh, then you don't need one, right? If you're able to successfully market on your social media platform. But whatever you use, you should have a presence on social media, right? You should have a social media profile, at least one, two, or three. Um, Typically, you should go with, first of all, the one that works best for your niche. Uh, so whether that's LinkedIn, if you're selling B2B, or you know, Facebook, or Instagram, or Pinterest, or WhatsApp, if you're doing something more B2C. Uh, whatever it is, have a presence, be there, 
um, you know, if you have a Telegram group, whatever it is, use social media to your advantage. It is enormously beneficial to marketing results. And if you don't know how to do that, well, you can always contact an agency like mine uh, where we do social media marketing properly for people to get the best possible results. Uh, and there's, of course, organic and paid social media marketing, right? There's different kinds. Uh, but in either case, you should be doing at least organic social media because for the most part it's free except for the time that it takes you to post messages and you can even automate quite a bit of that. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about that, again, hit me up uh, in the Telegram or Twitter or wherever you want to reach me, Discord, um, and you can uh, post your questions to me and, or here in the comments below. And I'll be happy to answer those too. Number four, get reviews on Amazon. Uh, Amazon reviews can help you get uh, incredible authoritative uh, text, supporting text, and uh, mentions uh, to your product or service. If you're selling one directly on Amazon, of course, that's extremely useful. Um, you know, don't try to buy fake reviews get honest reviews. There's a number of ways to get them. One very useful um, hack for this is to contact people that you know uh, that would be interested in this topic, that are close to you or in your inner circle of advisors or confidants, people who are your peers in business, and maybe they're authoritative, that works even better. And you get them to be among the first people to read it, review it, or you know, uh, use it and then give you a testimonial in exchange for, you know, you get them a, a free copy basically to review and they give you a testimonial, um, which can lend immediate credibility, of course, to your, um, you know, your book, your product, your service, whatever you're selling through Amazon. And even if you're not selling directly on Amazon, um, you know, you can have affiliate links that you're promoting if you're promoting an Amazon affiliate link. So you'd, again, you'd, you'd want to get, you know, comment reviews, product reviews, for that particular product uh, and then you know have ways to link out to your um, sales page that you're doing but if you're promoting your own site really for the most part um, your own products and services and you are able to sell them on Amazon this really is you know, the best way to use the Amazon reviews uh, is to get review comments that are positive to earn them obviously um, um, from the audience and to have them point to your Amazon product page. Uh, and then that way uh, you'll rank higher if you do that over time, if you get more and more links over time, you know, through comments. Uh, the higher you rank in Amazon, simply put, the more sales you'll be making. Uh, and if you are in a competitive niche, you know, that will require more effort, uh, but not having the links on Amazon would certainly not help you to rank higher, right? And having the links, having more positive links on Amazon will help you to rank higher. And again, you can also use them to promote an off-site uh, product or service. It doesn't only have to be promoting your on-site uh, product or services, but it is most helpful if you have something you can give away or sell uh, on Amazon. And you can literally give away a free Kindle PDF, right, ebook. Um, you know, charge 99 cents, but give it away, give it away for free to people who use Kindle. Like Amazon has that feature, and you can do that as a link magnet um, through Amazon, and then get link reviews, you know, or rather, get reviews about your product, your free ebook, uh, right there on Amazon. So, and of course, you don't have to make it free. Of course, you can sell the product if you know you have a target price that you can sell to use, even as a link magnet. So even your link magnet can be generating revenue for you. Right, and you do that by either picking a very popular Amazon product or your own product on Amazon if you know it's going to be popular or if you know it already is. So there you go. Get reviews on Amazon. Number five, upsell on exit pages. When you uh, have a visitor come to your website and they're going to leave because they weren't sold on the idea that you were pitching them on that landing page, um, you should always have an upsell option. You should always have another offer so that when they approach that tab to close the button, to close the tab, or to close the browser or whatever, 
uh, you know, you offer them a pop-up window, a pop-over window that says, hey, before you leave, here's another offer. You can consider this if you like. If they say no, you can either you know, give them one more offer or just let them go. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely use a one or two. Some people even use a three-step mechanism to let people close out, which can be a bit invasive and a bit annoying, but one or two is usually okay. Uh, and typically, you know, the highest threshold companies will typically make it just one offer. If people don't want that, just let them close the window already. But if you want to be a bit aggressive and have two messages there, it has been done successfully. Uh, but again, I would recommend just one, but always have at least one offer to people before they close the window. Uh, that will actually convert a surprising amount of people as long as the wind as long as the offer gives them a value. And usually what happens is people don't buy the thing because it's not in the price point range they were thinking. Sometimes it's too low, sometimes it's too high, right? Uh, if you find that your price point is too high for most people, well, first of all, you should experiment with different price points. Um, if you, same thing if you find it's too low, right? But in either case, for the outliers who are just beyond that line, if you give them some reason to try it at a smaller, you know, scaled down version rate, um, maybe give them a week for free or two weeks to try it out, or you know, depends what you're selling, give them, sell it to them for a dollar for the first month, and then it goes to regular billing, whatever it is, give them an offer that they can't refuse, so to speak, on the way out the door, so that they don't leave uh, without actually buying something from you, right? If at all possible. So there you go. Use your exit pages. Number six, enter awards contests. This one's kind of straightforward. Uh, people love winners. Straight up, if you apply to, you know, a hundred different awards sites and contests, uh, you can, you know, probably win at least some of them. The more awards you can stack onto your website, maybe with like a little seal or a graphic, whatever they send you, uh, you know, picture of a, a trophy or a laurel leaf or, you know, whatever they send you, you can stack a bunch of awards, graphics onto your website in the appropriate area. Maybe it's the footer, maybe, you know, it's the best thing you've ever done. <laughs> Make it more primary than that, but, you know, it shouldn't be the main thing people look at. Uh, but it can be on an awards page. But generally speaking, if you put it in the footer, it can be fine. Um, make all of them, you know, look uh, the same color, a gray tablet, a gray template or something like that, so that they look, you know, elegant, etc. Uh, or if they're all, you know, full color, etc., but they look nice, use them that, like that. But, you know, make sure it looks tasteful. Uh, you don't want to brag, but you do want to show that you're, you know, taken seriously by authoritative sites. And awards can help you do that. They're very easy um, to apply for course to win them you have to have certain standards so make sure you meet those standards to get the awards and recognitions that you're looking for um, but generally speaking if you're filling out the forms online they're, they're fairly standard and easy forms to fill out for the most part and then the details are where you get thick in the weeds where you have to you know explain for each particular site why you fit that particular award the best etc and then yeah you know start collecting those things and uh stack them up and show them off uh, but in a tasteful way in an elegant way so there you go uh yeah use awards sites number seven use the thank you page uh it's something that's very uh, commonly done on the best of sites when you sold a product to a customer the uh, e-commerce site in question will offer you an upsell, right? We'll offer the customer an upsell. Why? Well, because they've just bought something. So in all likelihood, you have a 24-hour window where you can upsell uh, at the highest possible conversion rate. Um, you can look at all kinds of cohorts and the statistics are very often true. That, you know, the immediate period after the initial purchase is the best time to offer an upsell. That can be one, two, three days, even up to a week. But typically speaking, you know, the more days that go on, the less chance of the upsell um, after the initial period. You you can certainly attempt to upsell them later uh, again and remarket and you know retain them and all that sort of thing. And you should of course be you know doing retention marketing. But in terms of acquisition sales, 
um, and immediate sales after the initial first time buy, uh, that first day is, is like very sweet. So you should not miss the opportunity um, to go for that upsell. Um, and that is exactly why you should do that. Okay, and uh, one very simple way to make sure that you're uh, offering something proper that people want uh, is to include on the thank you page itself, you know, the offer that comes immediately after the sale is made. So you might offer them to you know, increase the term of their package for a reduced price or to increase the features that they might receive. Again, for a reduced price, you know, one time only, you're going to get this offer now because you just joined as a thank you gift for giving you this opportunity, but you're not going to get it again. Um, countdown timers do work fairly effectively on this, in fact, incredibly effectively on this. Uh, so put a countdown timer on a page if it's appropriate. Don't put it on a page if it's not appropriate because it will absolutely turn off the certain kind of customer that doesn't want to see that. But if you're selling something where a countdown timer works, especially to a consumer audience, or even to an SMB, you know, stay at home, work from home kind of audience, if you're selling them something um, where time can be a leverage point, then by all means use it because it does work. Um, yeah, so there you go. Use those thank you pages. Number eight, use mail, chimps, etc. Um, use MailChimp, use uh, direct contact, use constant contact, use whatever email service you like. It doesn't really matter as long as it's a good, clean email service provider. Uh, you can even host your own email lists. You can use, you can even use things like Email Blast. Uh, email Blast, I know some people don't like those kind of software you know, applications because they think that <clears throat> they get caught in um, spam folders, etc. Sure. Uh, so use a service provider that you, you know, trust more. Again, you know, MailChimp is fine, but there's certainly plenty of others you can integrate with. It doesn't have to be MailChimp, uh, but use an email list provider. And what's important is that you have a constant drip of information that goes to your prospects and to your customers, right? So whether that's once a day, once a week, once a, every two weeks, once a month, whatever it is, stay consistent. Of course, the more you contact them, the better, as long as you don't overdo it. Ideally, you're contacting them, you know, Monday through Friday or at least once a week, right? Maybe twice a week. Um, you don't want to, you know, you, it depends, again, what you're promoting. You might have reasons to contact them every day, right? But most sites, depending on what you're selling, once a week is probably enough after the first couple of weeks. Uh, and then after that, you know, once a week is, is normally enough uh, to, to send them materials as long as it's relevant, as long as, you know, especially if they're customers, right? So definitely use email list software. It will be massively useful to your ROI. Uh, you can even try out various services for free for a couple of weeks. Some of them will even let you have, you know, um, freemium issue, you know, lists uh, or lists of contacts like HubSpot, etc. But you know, they do actually charge you for using those contacts. Um, MailChimp and others like it, you know, you can set up email lists, you can set up drip content, you can do all that stuff. Uh, they have a certain number of free subscribers you can have, and then after that you pay. So uh, try all these solutions out, whichever one you can try, get response. They have a whole sweet solution. There's a link to that in the description below also if you want it, so all these automation softwares. Um, definitely check these things out. Uh, email is still the killer app. Right. After 25, 30, even more than 40 years of internet, um, email is the killer app and it drives the bulk majority of revenues for a lot of companies that do e-commerce. So you should not neglect email, right? Because anything people do online, they need an email address, right? It doesn't matter if it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Google, whatever they're using, they need an email address to sign up, right? So having their email address is kind of like having the keys to the kingdom. That's really the ultimate place to go to. Of course, you have to make sure you don't get shunted to spam. Uh, how do you do that? Well, have killer content that people really want and value. Um, use the general two rule, you know, two to one rule of send two value emails, you know, 
two emails that are informational value for every one sales message that you send, right? At least. Some people do three to one, even four to one. Some people do more, but two to one is the very, is kind of the, the benchmark go-to standard for a lot of marketing. And you should definitely try that. Uh, unless you know that your lists respond differently. But in any case, make sure you use email unless you have some strange reason not to. And if you have some strange reason not to, please let me know what it is because I'd love to hear about it. I've yet to meet a business in my many, many years of marketing that wouldn't be uh, positively impacted by email marketing unless they required you know, to be a very small company that didn't want to have customers and they weren't trying to do any marketing, right? If you're trying to do any marketing, email must be used. So there you go. Use mail, chimps, etc. Number nine, hire freelancers. When you hire freelancers, you save more than just the labor costs and, and the benefits and the other associated wage issues. When you hire freelancers, you get people who usually deliver higher quality, even if they're at home in pajamas doing the work. Usually freelancers tend to do more work per hour. Uh, that's uh, as studied by the small business associations uh, in the United States and in Europe and in other countries uh, that have noticed that freelancers are actually extremely productive compared to the average worker who has to go to the office and spend eight to 10 hours there begrudgingly doing what they'd rather you know, not be doing. And they'd rather be at home doing what the freelancer is doing, which is uh, you know, producing good work, but with the flexibility to not be in the office. Uh, that's part of why freelancers do what they do. Uh, but you know, you, even if you're not working with an independent freelancer or if you're working with an outside company, you know, not, not just a freelancer sitting at home, but it might be a, a centralized company with staff, etc. When you outsource your marketing, uh, you can get more done. That is the point. So get more done by hiring freelancers. Uh, they save you time, they save you money, they save you effort, they save you on training, they save you on benefits, they save you on a lot of other associated costs that you don't get, uh, you know, that you, that you have with regular employees. Uh, and the freelancer also, you know, um, can do the job usually at a quicker pace uh, if you give them the uh, prerequisites, right? Because that's the task they're focused on. They're not going to be distracted by the other 10 million things happening in your office, right? So especially if they're working remotely. So yeah, again, you want to make uh, more money with your marketing, definitely, if you have a good reason to, hire freelancers. And uh, yeah, of course, if you're looking for a marketing agency who does these kind of services, contact me uh, and you know, talk to me. And if it's a right fit, I'd be happy to take care of you. And if not, I'll also be happy to refer you to uh, a better solution. Right? There you go. Number 10, pay influencers. Micro-influencers or social micro-influencers micro or social influencers can yield some staggeringly amazing results in marketing. Whether you're using Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest um, or even SoundCloud, right, or YouTube, wherever you're marketing, right, doesn't matter. Maybe you're pushing videos on Vimeo. Maybe you're, you know, uh, pushing stuff on LinkedIn groups. Wherever you're finding the influencers that are relevant to your niche, your niche, your niche, your niche, your niche. Um, <laughs> uh, micro influencers uh, you know, are going to be more affordable usually than macro influencers. Uh, it's going to be far more effective to get a thousand micro influencers to promote your product than to get one megastar who might mention your product for a ton of money, but then won't yield you know, as amazing results. You know, sure, you get the PR out of it, you get the branding out of it, you get all kinds of great value out of having a megastar uh, or a super influencer promote your stuff. But that doesn't mean you'll get the best results from it, right? Um, there's certainly plenty of uh, case studies where, you know, the Kardashians' uh, social media have been examined for efficacy. And the fact is, depending on what you're marketing, they may simply not be the right platform for you, even if you think it is. 
and you might be better off getting a thousand, you know, socialite kind of followers or fashion, fashionista, self-styled fashionista people or people who are really into that kind of scene. You know, they might be a better way for you to actually reach because those people are in touch with a smaller audience that cares more about what they say and that actually engages more in what they say. Right? A celebrity, you're not usually going to message back a celebrity on Twitter unless you actually have something of relevance to say to them and generally speaking um, if they have massive amounts of followers they're not sending out the kind of marketing messages or messages of any kind that are really designed for you to engage with except as a fan <clears throat> and that isn't necessarily going to do uh, much good for your marketing so look for micro influencers more than macro influencers you know, again if you can afford the macro influencers and you money is no object then by all means go out and get the top people that always works great just you know tamper your expected your expected results from that with the fact that you know uh, macro influencers don't always get the same kind of uh, yield than micro influencers um, and also micro influencers tend to be a lot cheaper right you can get some great endorsements for 25, 50, 75, 100 bucks from micro influencers who have a few hundred or a few thousand followers. Whereas uh, trying to go for a star that has millions or tens of millions or even over 100 million followers, um, that will probably cost you millions of dollars, right? Or very close to it at the least. Uh, so, yeah, and the results you get from that, you know, if they're not good enough, well, that might be very bad for your finances. So keep that in mind. And yeah, use the influencers that are most relevant to your marketing goal and make sure that you pick the right ones. And, you know, uh, there's plenty of tools you can use for that. And again, if you are not familiar with how to do all that, well, there are marketing agencies like yashaharari.com and contact us and we'll be happy to help you, uh, you know, to get that done. But of course, no obligation. You don't need to do that. Uh, but if you want just even a quick free consultation, uh, give us a ring. And we'll be happy to do that for you. Um, so that's going to do it for this week's uh, edition of the 10 top growth hacks that you can do right now to improve your marketing results. Um, you know, did we cover every platform? No, that's not the point of this. There are, did we cover every growth hack? No. Are there more growth hacks? Yes. Are there some that might yield better results? Yes, in all likelihood. Um, however, these are 10 of the really top ones that we are... Uh, that we know are very well tested through our own testing and through the testing of many other agencies and uh, departments across tons of industries and companies. Test it for yourself, look it over, scrutinize what we said, give it a shot. I'd love to hear what you think about our 10 top uh, growth hacks list. And uh, that's gonna do it for this edition of Marketing Insights. So until next time, folks, take care.